We love traveling, mainly focusing on our passions of scuba diving and skiing, but also experiencing our little planet's great cultures, people and wildlife when we can. Then 2020 happened, and just like lots of others around the world, we had a rethink. We spent some time travelling closer to home, which reminded us of the wonders right here on our doorstep. So we bought a 2012 Sprinter van and we're making it into a little home that we can use to explore nearer home and maybe even a little further afield. We're Sarah and Ben. Welcome to our journey to van life. So, thanks very much for being here with us. To follow our journey from how we turn this into this, please like, subscribe and click the little notification bell. And we'll see you out there on the road sometime. Well, it turns out January is not the best time of year to be doing this sort of work outside. The van was booked in for painting in the middle of January 2021. And so two days before it was booked in for the paint, I decided to cut out for the windows and the roof fans so that it was ready, um, so that all of these holes could be made good um, at the body shop and I wasn't going to be cutting out for the windows on a freshly painted van. Most of the holes cut out for the windows and the roof fans so all I'm doing here is cleaning up those rough edges with a flat disc on the, the little air grounder. To minimise the amount of work that the body shop had to do, and because I can do lots of this myself, I decided to strip off everything that I possibly could which, the, which would need to be taken off for the painting, while still allowing the van to be relatively legal to drive it down to the body shop. This included removing the side step so that the door was accessible to be able to be removed easily and cleaning out all of the, the rubbish that collects underneath there. Fellow Sprinter owners, I'm sure you're well aware of the extremely well hidden little plugs that hide the screws in these things. Good luck finding them on yours. The final few bits of preparation before going for painting, you can see here the rust treatment on the inside of the patches that I've welded up on the ceiling and this was a, a little test jig that I made just to test what angle I was going to have to make the roof rack at the top there much easier to do while it was still at home. And as the van now had a lot of very large holes in it it needed to be covered up in case it got filled with rainwater on the night before taking it down to the body shop. After spending some time looking around for somebody who could actually paint this van, we found the guys down at JEB Commercial and Car, which is in Bridgetown in Cannock in Staffordshire. They did a fantastic job, really great guys to deal with, couldn't do enough for you. So uh, I can highly recommend their services, they did a really nice job um, and were good people to work with. You can see here there's more stuff being stripped off, the lights and so on, and the window holes being masked up, ready for, for the first stages of preparation. realize just how many little dings there were in this van. You can see all the little circles drawn on it that are highlighting areas that needed a bit of attention. So these guys really did go to an awful lot of detail to make sure everything was addressed. So 
So we just had to cut out the holes for the small windows in the fiberglass side pods. First stages of primer going on, etch primer on that fiberglass side bulge and you can see there little bits of filler and then primer going on, ready for the first coat of proper primer. The bonnet and the side door and the bumper were all painted off the van so that all of the shuts could be done properly and, uh, and so that all of that, those areas that would be obscured by those doors could be painted. The first bits of the finished colour going on, so it's a Mercedes colour, a selenite grey, really nice colour, um, it's got a good sparkle on it of the metallic and looks great on this van. Painting this van was the, the only job in this whole build that we haven't actually done ourselves. It was really important to get it looking really good and painting really is one of those skills that you need the knowledge, skills and experience and the premises and the equipment to be able to do it properly. I don't have any of that so it was really important to engage professionals to do a proper job. So we'd got the van from looking like this to looking like this. So there you go, one painted van looking resplendent in its selenite grey metallic. All we've got to do now is fill in those huge holes in the sides with windows and get it watertight and put some of that bodywork back on and get it back on the road. The guys at JEB were fabulous, they actually let us keep the van in their workshop while we fitted the windows so we could drive it away watertight. So we used windows from Van Pimps, found them to be great people to work with, they have really good quality products, they've got everything in stock, really helpful and um, excellent people to deal with. There's a link in the description if you want to check them out. Once the edging strips were fitted to the holes to make good the, the edges of the cut metal, we put the primer onto the, the right part of the window, applied the glue to the van and pressed them into place. If you've used any of these sort of adhesives you'll know that working in close to zero degrees C conditions is no fun at all. So a few minutes in front of the space heater work wonders to soften it up and make it an awful lot easier to apply.
fans next into the roof, you can see those strengthening ridges that run up and down the roof and they prevent you being able to get a flat seat for the fans to sit on. So before it went away for painting, I made these markings on the roof to identify the exact locations and took lots of measurements and made some templates. And I had some adapter rings made by a company who do 3D printing to take up that space and provide a nice level mounting for the fans to go onto. This is now a few months after we were fitting the fans up on the roof of the van and you can see that the shower is now pretty much connected. Just let me show you inside here, show you what I'm talking about. Here's the fan then inside the shower cubicle. When I reach to the switch around the corner here and turn it on, you'll see that the light comes on and the fan comes on. I'll turn it off again so that you can hear what I'm saying. But when that's running, let me show you what happens to the door. So I've got this sliding door, if I close that, and it fastens with the magnet. So it makes a, a really nice finish all the way around the edge, nice tight, tight fit. And I'll turn it, I'll turn the fan on. You see there's so much suction that it actually sucks the door in. And on the inside, that looks like it's actually pulling the door off its fittings. These creases are not going to do it any good. I'm inside the shower now, so excuse the noise from the fan, but I'll close the door. Hopefully you can hear me. So when the door closes, it makes a seal, and it's actually sucking the door in like a balloon. I've put an air vent down here at the bottom, which is bringing in some fresh air from outside to equalise the pressure, but it's really not overcoming everything. You see when you go to open the door in that position it gets all caught up and tangled which is not good at all. So there's my problem the fan is actually too powerful and is sucking too much out because the everything in the shower cubicle is so well sealed. I think my options would be to either switch it separately so that the fan and the light are separate switch so you can shower with just the light on and then turn the fan on with the door open afterwards to clear some of the steam. I don't really want to do that though because a lot of steam will come out. I think my other option is to, con to fit some sort of um, speed controller or something to the fan so that you can run the fan more slowly and not create quite so much suction. What do you think? Have any of you come across something like this before? Do please stay tuned, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode when we're going to be talking about a rather special door handle.